Today News Update. A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, August 10. So glad you could join us. Barbados's national insurance scheme is under severe stress and it must be fixed. That's the assessment of NIS consultant actuary Derek Osborne as he joined Prime Minister Mia Motley, other top government and private sector officials, as well as non-governmental organizations in the national broadcasts to update Barbadians on the state of the national insurance scheme. Osborne completed the 17th actuarial review of the national insurance scheme, which was tabled in Parliament on Tuesday night. The outlook for the fund now is that Depletion of the fund could be as soon as 12 years from now, in 2034, on a pessimistic outlook, but on a more optimistic outlook, it could be in 2041. So if we think about only 12 years, you know, 12 years ago was 2010. So in the next 12 to 15 years, we're looking at the fund being really challenged in a crisis position. And a fund being depleted does not mean that NIS will no longer exist. It just means that NIS will need to find additional funds because there's no longer any savings which you can you know, deplete to, to meet your benefits. He outlined possible solutions to put the fund on a better footing. The one way we have the most room to look at and consider different options is to make the average new pension smaller. Right? So again, if the objective is to reduce costs over the future, the one way we have to do it is to reduce the average pension that you know, every the cohort of people retiring in a certain year receive. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody must get less. I think we have to make sure we remember that. There are ways of reducing the overall average by not having everybody get less. So we have to consider the, the most vulnerable, the ones at the lower income spectrum, and the minimum pension is that safety net that they now have to ensure that they get that minimum amount every month. Prime Minister Mia Motley assured Barbadians the fund was in a position to meet all its obligations, but she stressed the need to safeguard the future. We are not in crisis, but we want to avoid a crisis 15 years from now. That is therefore going to mean that those of us who have the responsibility for taking decisions can do so at the earliest possible opportunity. There are countries in the Caribbean that are five, six years away from the moment that we are talking about. We don't want that to happen to us because if that happens to us, it means like with everything, and we know it in terms of medical decisions in our own lives, the longer we leave something to fix it, the more we are at risk of it being fatal to us. Chairman of the Barbados Private Sector Association, Tricia Tannis, endorsed the need for a more sustainable fund. She said the private sector will be actively engaged in the reform process. From the private sector's perspective, we will be monitoring keenly, contributing to and monitoring uh, any design elements because they will have uh, a knock-on impact on, on, an, on private sector schemes as well. General Secretary of the National Union of Public Workers, Richard Green, noted that the fastest growing division in his union is the retirees division, and the NUPW is keen on ensuring that the NAS fund is sustainable. What our members need is a reliable, a sustainable, and a stable NAS fund, and uh, a total, and that be, being part of the total social security platform. Our beneficiaries need to feel confident that in their time of need, the NIS will be there for them and be there for their children as well. So we support the sustainable development of society and the economy to make this economy stronger, to make the NIS stronger, and of course, for greater prosperity and security for our constituents and the society as a whole. The General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Tony Moore, lauded government for not waiting until it was too late to address the worrying situation. The fact that we are in crisis where there may be the consideration by many, there are many other immediate issues that we should be concerned with. It is remarkable for us that our country is one that is exemplar, not waiting until a situation inflates out of our control where 
the responses are not responses that we can shape, but we are taking action to ensure that changes can be implemented and be graduated in a way that the equity that everyone has spoken about that is so necessary now is, is achieved. Meanwhile, Minister of Labor and Social Security, Colin Jordan, assured Barbadians that they will have the opportunity to be fully engaged on the future of the NIS. We will be having a suggestion box in every parish. By Monday, we should have about half of those boxes placed, and soon thereafter, we'll have the others placed. The, we are intending to use post offices because they are scattered across the country and are accessible by most persons. We also intend to have some town hall meetings, even though there is the room for placing suggestions. We understand that Barbadians like still to have some opportunities to engage on a face-to-face -face basis. And so we intend to have about three town hall meetings, one at the center, so the St. Michael area, one in the east, and one in the north. And so we're gonna have those town hall meetings. The dates of the town hall meetings will be communicated to the country once we have firmed up those um, dates and locations. In other news, Colombian national Oswaldo Rafael Acosta Oroca was today remanded to Dodds after appearing before Magistrate Douglas Frederick at the District B Magistrates Court sitting at the District F complex at Harcel St. Joseph. 58-year-old Aroca has been charged with unlawful possession of cannabis, trafficking cannabis, possession with intent to supply the drug, and disembarking without the consent of an immigration officer and entering Barbados other than a port of entry. He was not required to plead to the indictable charges. The accused is being represented by attorney at law Shadia Simpson, while Station Sergeant Glenda Carter Nichols is representing the state. He was remanded until September 7. Regional and international news coming up after this short break. Cure oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over 1 billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge. From strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news, the majority of Jamaicans wants government to remove the Queen as head of state. That's the findings of the latest RJR Gleaner Don Anderson poll. More details in this report from Television Jamaica. Pollster Don Anderson put the question to 1,113 people during the period July 16 to 26. 56 percent of respondents said Jamaica should move away from the monarchy. 27 percent want to keep the Queen as head of state and 17 percent were not sure. The data show growing support for Jamaica to sever ties from Britain. In 2012, 44% of respondents wanted to remove the Queen. In 2020, it was 59%. Similarly, in 2012, 40% of respondents wanted to keep the Queen as head of state, but that number has fallen. Now the government is moving full speed ahead with the plans for Jamaica to become a republic. An advisor committee has been set up to work with the Ministry of Legal and Constitutional Affairs. It is my intention in leading the process to work assiduously to place something before the Parliament, unless, of course, something more pressing happens to overtake for the start of the next session, so that the steps can be taken in time for the next general election. On the international front, Kenyans are waiting for the outcome of Tuesday's tightly contested presidential election. The race between the two frontrunners, William Ruto and Rela Odinga, is getting closer, and both are confident of victory. In Kisumu, Raila Odinga's stronghold, his supporters wait to find out if he will be Kenya's next president. Tuesday's election was the fifth time Odinga ran for the top job, and this time, the veteran opposition leader has the backing of outgoing leader Uhuru Kenyatta. Here in Western Kenya, 
his supporters seem confident. What I know in uh, this election, if something is wrong, we will go to court. Yeah, I know that we will go to court. Because I'm very sure my president is going to win. Nairobians! We are Nairobians! Yeah. Wait for us! Yeah. The Shumu is coming! Yeah. The Shumu is coming! Yeah. I'm done! The people of Kenya! Odinga's main rival, Deputy President William Ruto, is also confident of winning. He portrays himself as a champion of the poor, a man who rose from humble beginnings. Many Kenyans want change, that means uh, transformation of their lives. Um, um, uh, and whether Ruto will be that kind of a person, if he at all he wins the elections, uh, is time that will tell. Despite some logistical and technical challenges, Tuesday's polls were largely peaceful. But turnout was lower than some previous elections. Kenya has a history of election violence, with the rival politicians refusing to accept the results and accusations of fraud. Although some Kenyans might have voted along tribal lines, for most people here, the economy was the big issue. They want the next leader to address the high cost of living, unemployment and corruption. The final result from the Electoral Commission is expected in days. The winning candidate must get 50% plus one vote. Otherwise, there will be a runoff. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bg. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on a Zoom media and bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.